The Adeptus Custodes are the pinnacle of humanity. They are peerless warriors standing above even the power of the Astartes. Truly indestructible and unstoppable. Wielding the most powerful and exotic weapons, and dressed in royal red and gilded gold, they don't rely on stealth or cunning. Their raw power is enough to turn the tide of any battlefield. In fact, they have never once lost a fight. They are the bodyguards of the Emperor himself. And I think they look like dumb shiny bananas. I've always had a love-hate relationship with the Custodes. I've read their lore, I've read stories about them, and they're so incredibly cool. But when I look at those models on the Games Workshop web store, when I'm riding high off of the energy that those stories gave me, and I see those golden bananas just sitting there on the Games Workshop web store, they just don't really excite me. But I wanna try, I wanna see if I can make some Custodes that make me really happy. I've already put together my kill team, three spear guys and one sword dude. And I already think they're looking just a little bit better than the ones in the Games Workshop web store. I've done some subtle modifications. I took some green stuff and I shoved it into their tummies to add a little bit of height. And I also put a little blob of green stuff between their necks and their bodies to add even more height. So my custodies actually stand just a little bit taller than Intercessor Space Marines, which is very appropriate. I wanna see if I can make these custodies look like how I feel custodies should look like. I don't want them to look like tacky gold statues. I want them to look epic and grim dark and super cool. And I'm gonna paint them gold without using a single gold paint to do it. These custodians are lean, mean fighting machines and I haven't glued them down to the bases yet. I'm actually gonna be doing some sub-assemblies for this project. Right now they're just poster puttied on because of the bases I've made for these. The only bases I thought were regal enough for the golden bananas, some marble. I did this by rolling some milliput out flat, then letting it harden, then cutting it into squares, chipping and snapping it here and there, and then gluing them to cork. I think it makes for very impressive bases for some very impressive superboys. I stuck everything down in some paint handles. It's time to get to work. Now I mentioned I don't really like how Games Workshop painted their custodies, and it's not really the Evy Metal team's fault. They're stuck using only Games Workshop paints and only the way that Games Workshop prescribes their paints to be used. Retributor Armor, Reichland Flesh Shade, Auric Armor Gold, Liberator Gold, Stormhost Silver. Even after all of those colors, the models lack any real contrast, because all of those colors are very similar to one another. Now if you hop on over to Forge Roll's web store and take a look at their custodies, you'll notice that they look way better. They have tons of contrast. I'm not exactly sure how they painted their models, but I bet it's going to be very similar to how I'm going to paint mine. I prime the minis black. It's really the only primer color I use. I like having my shadows taken care of from the jump. Then for step one of gold, you guessed it, gunmetal. I sprayed this all over their gilded bodies. Then a little Minotaur ghost tint green, a transparent green paint. I'm doing some true metallic metal voodoo, and it's important to think about what metallic paint really is. It's tiny glitter mixed into gloss paint medium. This green tint will be the start of my shadows. I really like these ghost tints. I don't get to use them very often because they have a very glossy finish, but that's perfect for working over metallics. If you're doing something like Alpha Legion or Thousand Suns for Horus Heresy, this is a great option. My shadows were not quite dark enough, so I sprayed some black paint. I want their butts and armpits dark, so these models end up with a lot of contrast. Then a highlight of some white aluminum, the brightest silver paint I can find. Now the models were looking good, but I had a nagging feeling in the back of my mind. I haven't used magenta yet. I need to use magenta on every project I paint, so I sprayed it on. I don't know how much this will affect the final product, but I had to do it. Now I've built up a good amount of contrast, but I want more. I want every little detail to really pop, so I threw on a wash. Army Painter Dark Tone. Because it's more satin gloss finish than Games Workshop's Null Oil. Perfect for metallics. The wash is dry. It's time to turn these suckers into true custodies. I'm not doing any weird heretical silver custodies. These are going to be true golden boys. And the secret sauce to completing them is going to be orange ink. Orange ink is pure magic. When painted over any sort of silver, it instantly transforms into gold. If you dust it on, you get a lighter yellow gold. And if you really hose down a model, it turns into a dark, saturated brown gold. But before I do that, I really like this silver, and I want it to stay exactly like it is on the magazines and handles of the gun, sword, spear, thingies. So I put some silly putty over the spots I want to keep. Then it was time for gold. I loaded up my weapon and sprayed it on. Instantly, the models came to life. The boys turned to a lovely shade of gold. And demasking is always a joy. I dry brushed on top of the gold to do the highlighting for me. I don't like edge highlighting. I find it tedious and unnecessary. A few swipes with the dry brush and all the details were highlighted to my satisfaction. Now that is some gold. Some nice dark burnished gold. All without touching a paintbrush. Dry, dry brushes don't count. But now it is time to touch a paintbrush. 
I love models like this, where I can do some sort of simple quick effect on the vast majority of the mini, then I can spend my real painting time going hard on the details. This red was a joy to paint. If I was doing a scheme like the Pydenoris Caligus or Shadow Keepers, it would have doubled or tripled how long each guy's armor would have taken to paint. But with pretty much just this red to worry about, it was a dream. All painted with Evil Sun Scarlet and a mix of black paint. Starting with the dark red, I carefully worked up through brighter and brighter shades of red, until I got pure white. Then a glazing of red and the armor accents and their fancy ponytails were done. The red really made these suckers come to life. Although I'm gonna be taking a break from these bananas to eat a banana and to work on these bases because I'm really jazzed about these bases. These bases need to become marble and the best way to do that is with wet wipes. Yes, really. First, I airbrushed some almost white light green onto the bases. I'm gonna be working light to dark. Then I took my dry wet wipe. It's important to let it dry out. Then I carefully pulled it apart until it was almost ripped. That way there was room in between the fibers so that I could put paint through it. Then I held the wet wipe over the bases and airbrushed right on top of it. It left behind some really natural looking shapes that have soft edges. You can stop whenever you'd like to, but I wanna keep going to darken these suckers up. I sprayed again with dark green. This gave some nice contrast and then a blue green over everything. That way the marble has lots of layers. This is probably marble from the Golden Palace of Terra, so it should be super fancy. I glazed some more blue green onto the cork, and then I airbrushed some gloss paint over top to really sell the polished marble. A little bit of black wash to accentuate the cracks, and the marble was done. I glued down the golden boys because I couldn't wait to see what they looked like. Man, do those custodies look good on the green bases. The green 40mm bases. 40mm bases are by far my favorite sizes of bases because of how unusual they are. Most things are on 25s, 28.5s, or 32mm bases, so the 40mm are always something special. And speaking of special, custodies are the specialist of the special special guys, and so they deserve only the finest bases, and that's what I've glued them to, Cobalt Keep bases. Cobalt Keep makes the highest quality wargaming bases around. Featuring all the sizes you need, sizes like the ubiquitous 25mm base, the mighty 32mm base, even the monstrous 170mm oval, no matter what size base you need, Cobalt Keep has it. And what makes their bases so special? Well, they use more plastic than their competitors, giving their bases a robust and strong feel. Sometimes, especially the larger size wargaming bases can have too much flex, but with Cobalt Keep bases, they are rigid and durable, no matter how hard you go with the modeling. And looking under a Cobalt Keep base, you will see an integrated magnet well, perfect for accepting a nice strong magnet that their bases are sold with or without. These magnets are perfect for holding your miniatures firmly to any magnetic surface so you can transport or display your miniatures without worry. Cobalt Keep was started with the goal of bringing innovative and affordable products to the growing world of miniature hobbyists and they have definitely succeeded. These bases are world class. And if you shop with our code BASES10, you can get 10% off your purchase of Cobalt Keep bases for the next two weeks. Okay, nothing but fun steps from here on out. What details do I want to tackle next? I think I want to work on those weapons. As nice as the golden shafts of their guardian spears look in gold, I want them to stand out more against their bodies, so I painted the handles purple. Then I base coated the rest with black speed paint, carefully working around the fancy Art Nouveau details. Then a little edge highlighting of gray to accentuate the shapes and angles in the handle. Then it was time for the blades. I base coated these with magic blue and began highlighting the tips up to pure white. Then came the painstaking task of painting on little lightning bolts. The custody weapons should be extra special, so I don't want to do classic power swords. But after two hours of trying to get these lightning bolts right, I did wish I just left it magic blue and called it a day. I did the same thing on the sentinel blade. And on the blade I decided to go with long horizontal lightning bolts instead of short vertical ones, and I think it turned out way better. It was a lot easier to do, and it made for a more lightning-y looking lightning. I put a coat of gloss paint over the weapons to seal in the flavor, and they were done. Oh, so many tiny little lightning bolts. Sometimes when I'm painting a kill team, it cures me of my desire to start that army in big 40k, because I don't know how many times I could paint Custody's weapons. With that being said though, these guys are getting really close to tabletop time. One thing I'm still pondering is what to do with all of these Custodes balls. They're not quite as bally as the Necrons, but they do have all of these little balls as decorations. I painted one guy up to have red balls, but is that the move? Do I add in another color and maybe make them a little bit fancier? Or is yellow and red the perfect color for the Custodes bodies? And then the accents can be their blue power swords and their green bases. Mm, I might need to test it out. On the first pair of balls, I want to try this Jade Green from Vallejo, one of my favorite colors of all time. I started with a base coat, then a highlight, then a lighter highlight, then a specular dot of white on top of the balls. I like how this looks a lot, but maybe there's something better. Next I want to try a little Barney the Purple Dinosaur Purple. 
I applied the purple and it also did something nice for the armor, but I don't know if I'm sold. The last color I want to try out is blue. It's kind of hard to read, but that says heavy blue. The blue is a slightly different shade of blue to the weapons, but it also looks nice to have the same color brought back into the armor. Dang, those are some good looking balls. I can't decide what color I like best, but maybe I'll just leave it as four different guys with four different colors. It kind of makes sense because custodies aren't actually soldiers. Every single custody is a very unique individual. And so I think it is very fitting to have a little something unique about every single one. And you know what is also very unique? That's right, the Eons of Battle Patreon. Over there, we have brand new terrain sets every month. This month, we have the Starship Bridge, a modular grimdark spaceship interior, complete with stained glass windows. This set is available for the month of March and is hosted through Comics, Games, and Things. On our Patreon, you can also watch extra episodes of EOB, join live Discord Hangouts, and get your name on Space Marines. These custodies are pretty much done. The only thing left is the Leader's Cape. And I am very bad at capes. I've been trying for years to come up with the perfect formula, the perfect recipe for super easy capes. Airbrushes, oil washes, dry brushing, glazes, contrast paint, speed paint, and I've never found anything that I really, really like. So I think I'm just gonna try to paint it and we'll see what happens. I base coated the cape with a nice dark red on the outside and a gray on the inside. Dry brushes are really good for stuff like this. They have lots and lots of bristles and so they can get into all those little nooks and crannies. Then I worked up adding more and more highlights mixing red into the dark red paint mix. Every highlight was smaller than the one before so that a gradient started to form between the brightest and darkest spots. Then it was time for the details and this custodian leader has a full tapestry on his cape because he is just that fancy. I base coated these with a dark tan. Then I mixed my original silver paint with the orange ink to make a gold and I painted this on top. Then washed it with a black wash. I highlighted using a silver to help the value in these designs conform to the highlights already on the cape. Then it was ready to be glued on. The Custodes are ancient warriors, literally. These same Custodians have been around since before the Emperor was entombed upon the Golden Throne, where they have guarded him tirelessly for 10,000 years. But now, with the might of chaos growing and the Imperium in ruin, they have finally left Terra and set out into the galaxy to bring the Emperor's might to their foes. The Adeptus Custodes, the kill team that I've kind of been most excited to put together because they're very different than the other kill teams I have. Where most of my kill teams are about 10 dudes with special abilities, the Custodes are only four. And that makes them really, really unique and play very differently. I actually used these Custodes against my nemesis, Sean, and he did win, but it was a very close game. I lost with 15 points, he won with 16 points. It was neck and neck, all battle, my super powerful custodies were killing stuff left and right. And I think in terms of kill team, the custodies are the best team for beginners or as a loner army to give to your friends. Cause kill team is kind of a lot. There are tons and tons of rules and it is a project to learn a bespoke team. There's a lot of really, really complicated stuff. With the custodies, there isn't. It is four really powerful dudes, only really one good tactical and strategic ploy. There's very little to keep track of and they're still really, really fun to play with. I love the Custodes, and I think that they are a phenomenal kill team. They hit like a ton of bricks. Green marble bricks. Thanks for watching.